Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and welcome to Shred Gaming and the reaction to the highly anticipated dev update video we've been waiting for for so long. So Tom Cannon, Sean Rivera, and the glorious dev team that is creating Project L over at Riot Games has blessed us with an early Christmas present and has given us the update video that we have been waiting for. And I just want to say, do you know how hard it is to hold off from watching this entire video when they released it at AAM PST and I'm at work and can't watch it. Yeah, this has been a struggle all day long. I have been waiting for this update to come out and I am so excited to uh, watch it and uh, share my reactions with you. But before I get to that, I wanted to say I hit my goal. I said by the end of the week, I wanted to get 100 subscribers. I'm currently at 113, but at the end of the week, I hit 111. Thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed. The new goal is by the first of the year, I wanna hit 200. So please like, like, subscribe, comment down below. Please help this channel grow. Now let's get after it. All right, here we go. It's a barrier, for sure. That's cool. Look at that Hi, thing. everyone. This is Tom from the Project Dell team. Hey, I'm Tom back Scott's with our hair. second promised update this year. I wonder if he died at that color. Our last two updates focused on the big picture. We're a free to play tag team fighter set in the universe of Runeterra. I know at this point you're probably itching for some details. Yes. So this time, we're going to send the year off right with a deep dive into some of our core systems. But first, here's a quick update on Alawi. All right. We revealed Alawi in our update last August. Back then, Alawi was in the initial DNA phase of development, where designers, narrative writers, and artists explore concepts for the character's visuals, thematics, and overall kit design. Over the past few months, the team has taken Alawi from concept to an early playable form. Hold on. Holy crap. Dude, she looks so good. I'm not gonna lie, I was I was skeptical at first about Alawi coming in here because I'm not a, too big of a fan um, of the character, but she looks freaking sick and Jinx looks sick. That is another thing I, I kind of had on the game is that I, I saw that they had lack there of facial, um, uh, facial expressions, but I mean, this looks good. Is that Ionia? Dude, this stage looks sick. Dude, there is a lot going on here. So. Allow is now live in our internal play tests. Okay. This early draft of her model and kit. What you're seeing here is about 30% complete. Right now the 30? team is focused on fully realizing the combat fantasy at I mean, that's not a bad thing, but that looks like a lot has been done for just 30%. And now I'm starting to see what they meant, because I remember they were saying that the tentacles aren't going to be, um, uh, what's it called, a puppet. Like, they're saying that she's not going to be a puppet character, and now I'm starting to see it, because I thought she's going to be a lot like um, Zato from, Zato from uh, uh, Guilty Gear Drive, but so far it's kind of like her her uh, tentacles are just assisting her in her combos. As a big body brawler and narrowing in on the mechanics of her tentacle attacks. Okay. Meanwhile, the art team continues to work on her model, animations, sound, and VFX. Cool. She's still got a lot of work to be done, and that means it's time to talk about our big update for today, Project L's gameplay. Really, I like some HyperX stuff, don't they? It's okay, I'm sporting HyperX too. Hey everyone, I'm Sean Unconquerable Rivera, What's game up, director and gameplay design lead for Project L. And I'm here to talk you through some of our core gameplay principles. We want to create a game where you can have fun right away Dude. while also rewarding you for the time you spend mastering it. Our That's dream is making sure our champions stage. have fast, powerful abilities, look oh. really sick while doing oh. them, and are even more powerful when paired with flexible systems. That is such a sick ult. That is the coolest ult. Like, I don't even play Darius, and I know what his ult looks like in League of Legends, but that level three ult looks so sick. And I saw that they just added some VFX as well. And dude, every single time, like you see a new update, it just looks better and better. Look at this. 
Look Champions have fast, powerful abilities, look really sick while doing them, and are even more powerful when paired with flexible Boom. systems. So sick. Gameplay that has quick, fluid movement at its core is extremely important to us. We believe there are a ton of opportunities for player expression and mastery through how you move. In Project L, you can walk, run, dash, chain dash, jump, long jump, and super jump. And on top of that, many champions have their own unique air mobility options. Okay. Okay, this is something I didn't see before. Air dash. 100% air dash. And she has a dive kick. Ari just became even cooler. Like, Ari looks so sick before, and now they just added an air dash and a dive kick to her? Oh my gosh. Putting your champ in the right place at the right time is a skill that you can gradually get better at over time. Oh, that's sick. We also want to incentivize action. This means making sure that your offense is rewarding. Okay. Wall bounces. Now, I saw wall bounces before, but the, the, like I've, that looked like an injustice um, one and two wall bounce, or just injustice, sorry. That looked like an injustice wall bounce. So. That your buttons are worth pressing. Plus, we think this makes playing and watching more exciting. It does. Dude, this game looks so good. I just want to point that, watch the, if you really watch how they move and the animation behind it, like, I don't know if you just saw it when he was hitting when he was when he was comboing and then walking back. It's such a fluid looking game. Dude, you could tell they put really, or they put a lot of hours into it, dude. It looks so good. We want you to have powerful <laughs> buttons, which are useful in a number Very of ways. Jinx thing to while do. While also giving you the tools you need to defend against them. We have a mix of big, clear defensive options and some more nuanced systems that reward yeah. you for reading your opponent's next move. Those are just some of the basics, but I've still got more to cover today. Okay, before he moves on or with what he's going to cover, now... We, we hear a lot that fighting games are hard. I hear that all the time. And I'm not going to like, comboing is not that hard. Yeah, implementing combos into a competitive play, that is hard. I'll admit that. And knowing, you know, your situationals and stuff. But the hardest thing about, about fighting games, I uh, like one, of, one thing I think is, is, you know, footsies and normals um, in, you know, playing your neutral. And... It looks like this game is going to be extremely footsies heavy, but it in it's very Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. Uh, it's it looks like it's heavily inspired by that, and um, but it's it looks like it's at a very good pace. And um, I know I sound like I'm totally gushing over this game right now, but um, it looks like it has a very, very smooth and like perfect pace, um, a very like Street Fighter pace, but not so fast in the way that Dragon Ball Fighters and Skullgirls are. Um, Skullgirls, sorry, but it uh, it 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 looks like it's going to be very footsies heavy. You know, you're going to play a lot in the neutrals, and um, and yeah, that that is where. I think a lot of new players kind of will um, have a hard time grasping um, because I think that's probably the hardest part of the fighting game, of any fighting game really, is, is the neutral. So um, yeah, let's see what he has next. We were originally developing Project L to be a 1v1 game where two champions enter and one emerges victorious. But around two years that. ago, we made the pivot to a tag team assist-based fighter. That probably tells you exactly one of the very many reasons why the game has been in development for so long. COVID probably had a lot to do with uh, the extended game development, considering Valorant and um, uh, Legends of Runeterra came out before uh, COVID was in real full effect, um, or the, the lockdowns were. And the developing team, I think, I believe is in San Jose. Um, in Northern California and in the Bay Area, lockdowns were extremely uh were were pretty were pretty hard in the Bay Area. And so I can imagine that's probably why. But this is another reason why they probably took that time and took and to to really like rethink and develop how this game is going to be. And um yeah, so anyway. 
Our tech systems are deep and flexible, aimed at helping you unlock your creativity. Her dash, by the way, in League of Legends is an ultimate. It's It looks like it's going to be a part of her main kit and not her ultimate, but I can see Ari being like an aerial combo. Like a lot of her combos are going to be a lot of, uh, are, are going to be aerial combos. They work in tandem with our champions, allowing two champion teams to take down opponents together. There it is. That's our cue. We really felt like it gave us more space to create hype moments where our champions could live up to their fantasies. Okay. And I mean, who doesn't love a good team fight? I like tag team. Nice. Okay. Okay. Oh, that is her charm. Let's see the charm. Okay, that charm right there. Yes. Um, that's her E in League. Basically, she throws out a charm and it uh makes you uh it makes the opponent walk forward towards you. And um it's like it is probably the most important part of her entire kit and in, in, in League of Legends. And uh I hope it's just as prevalent. I mean, she looks like I and by the way, I I thought Arya was going to be an orb character, and that totally does not look like the case at all. Oh, that, was, that was so sick. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> yes. She has flame choppers, and not only does she throw her flame choppers, which is her traps, but you can hit them to move, make a move forward towards you. That is so sick. That is unbelievably sick. Dude. Okay. Overhead. Switch it out. Wall bounce. Okay. All right, let's break down some of the things you just saw. It looks so sick. Those, dude, oh my gosh. Team composition is going to be so big in this game. That is so sick. Oh my gosh. Keep going, man. I want to hear everything. Your main champion, which we'll call your point, and your assist champion can set up some killer combos okay. using Point all of our tag systems. we got. But for today, I want to focus on three of them. Assist actions, handshake tag, and dynamic save. Okay. These names aren't locked, so they may be called something... Dynamic save. I wonder what that is. So you got your assist, your handshake. I'm assuming a handshake is like your typical Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Fighters assist. Different the next time you see them. Okay. Assist actions are your bread and butter. <laughs> look, and each look at Jinx. Hold on. Look, let's, dude... <laughs> Jinx looks so sick. I'm glad they I'm like I was saying, lack their facial expression was something I was like, huh, like this is something they need I, I think they have yet to implement, but anyway. Assist actions are your bread and butter. Okay. And each champion has two they can perform from off screen. Okay. You can even hold the input to get a charge assist. Handshake tag lets you immediately swap between your point and assist champions as long as they're both on screen. Okay. When combined with assist actions, it also lets you set up some really powerful pressure sequences. And you can even use these to extend your combos as well. Oh, so you can handshake tag. They stay there while you're comboing, and then you can hit a button in which you, you, you switch to that other person? Okay. The last tag system I want to talk about today is Dynamic Save, Project L's combo breaker. At the start of each match, you have access to your dynamic save ability. Dynamic save lets you call your assist champion on screen in an attempt to save your point champion. If successful, the results can be explosive. Ooh, but be okay. careful about timing your dynamic save because it can be countered if you're being too predictable. Oh, okay. So combo breaker's always been a big deal, um, particularly in Mortal Kombat games. Probably the ultimate downfall to Mortal Kombat 11 was its breaker, um, breakaway. 
And that was one of the worst mechanics I've ever seen. No offense to NRS, but that was one of the worst mechanics I've ever seen in a fighting game was breakaway. Now, I'm okay with combo breakers in any fighting game, except a combo breaker should stop everything you're doing. It you shouldn't it shouldn't allow the person who's doing the breaking to combo off of that or have an advantage after a combo breaker. It a combo a good decent mechanic in any fighting game or a good i'm sorry um a good breaker in any fighting game the breaker you you're supposed to you know utilize resources to stop um to stop the combo you know to reset yourself or 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 what have you but you should never have an advantage from it and i'm glad also that they're implementing the they're implementing um uh, that if you do it wrong that you'll be punished for that that's a great mechanic as well because it, you know it, like it's a risk it's supposed to be a risk and uh i'm 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 so happy that they did that there's still more to uncover about our gameplay but that's all we're ready to share for now oh come on thanks for watching and i'll hand things back to tom to say <laughs> goodbye okay thanks sean we're pretty pumped about how things are coming Thank together. Thank you, Sean. And I hope you are too. Yes. As always, let us know what you think. Okay. Also, thanks to all the tournament organizers who met with us at EVO last summer to share your thoughts, feelings, and hopes for Project L's community and competitive scene. I heard that they were um, going around to EVO and talking to a lot of the tournament organizers about, um, about Project L and their hopes for it. You can tell they're taking this game very seriously as far as the esports scene go or the esports scene go goes <clears throat> sorry and um yeah it's uh i heard that they were going around like talking to them and having meetings and stuff we're making this game with you in mind and we want to empower you to keep pushing our community forward finally for those of you out there looking Smack to get into fighting buttons, games for bro. the first time try finding a local scene in your area Okay. Fighting games, like most things, are way better when they're enjoyed with friends. Very true. FGC folks, help the new folks out by sharing your links in the comments. Thanks so much for everything, and stay tuned for more next year. This game is going to be so oriented around the FGC. Now, at first, I was kind of like, okay, is it going to be its own thing? Is this going to go in its own? Because Riot, Riot Games is, is its own thing. Like, it's not like you see a League of Legends Dota tournament. It's not like you see a Valorant and um, pick a game, Apex Legends uh, tournament. It's it's Valorant. It's League of Legends. They're kind of solo, you know, and uh, they, they kind of do their own thing. This is different, way different, because Riot Games is like, okay, we want to be a part of the FGC. Um and you can tell it's very it's very fight game community focused um which is really good now he also talked about locals another big thing because um i mean there's a lot of conversations about lo locals dying out and um that's not i mean it really depends on where you are where i per, i live in northern california there is locals um it really depends on the game there's a huge uh there's you know uh smash melee uh guilty gear um i think there's a dnf duel um community going around but uh uh i don't think that lasted very long but um yeah uh you can tell they're very very focused on the fgc on communities and they want to be a part of it and uh which is a great thing because i i don't want something to take over the fgc i want something to build up the fgc and i'm okay and this <laughs> um this is kind of hard to say the fgc can be um it can be a toxic place to be uh not not so much like you know the the i can handle you know trash talking within competitions and stuff that's fine but it's like it 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 needs to be more welcoming and i'm really glad he said that because we want to build the fgc we want to bring in more people we want to bring in new new players not just because fighting games are are hard because they are um, but we want to 
be a welcoming community for everyone and anyone to uh, come in and enjoy fighting games and bring people together. And uh, that's something I think that we as a community can really work on and, um, you know, not uh, gatekeeping. And um, yeah, I think that's something that we can, that we can all do. And, and I'm glad that Tom Cannon is very uh, pro community building. So anyway, So, oh my gosh, so much to unpack here. There's so much going on in this update. Dude, we got mechanics, we got uh, maneuverability, um, obviously showed off, you know, some more VFX that are part of the game. They updated a, a lot of the uh, visuals in the game. Um, there's so much to break down. I'm gonna say that for another video as well. Um, uh, another thing is, uh, I can see it's very Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. Um, influenced or just marvel versus capcom in, in general um and and school girls too i see a lot of influence in a lot of those tag team fighters um it looks like it's gonna be a great uh uh like the speed of the game looks fantastic you know it's not gonna be near as fast as dragon ball fighters but it's not gonna be you know as slow as um you know some other fighting games uh i wouldn't say street fighter is necessarily like super slow but um it looks like it's gonna be a little bit quicker than that and um i was wrong on a lot of things in my prediction video and i'm okay with that i'm completely okay you know i thought we'd get a name um a little disappointed that we didn't get to see some katarina but that's okay um alawi looks amazing uh i'm not a huge big bodied fan but a big body player fan but i i, I might try some alawi um, Darius looks sick. Uh, the facial there, you can tell they're working on the facial expressions and you know, those tiny little things that, you know, aren't necessarily like super important to gameplay, but it, but it, it's things they've added and it looks great. Um, didn't expect to get dates. I mean, uh, the beta dates was, that was more of a 50, that was even 50, 50. I, I knew that wasn't going to happen. That was more so, more so like a hopeful uh they're never gonna give us a release date until maybe a month before the game comes out um i'm still uh pretty optimistic it's gonna be out by uh late 2023 um because it could be a couple of different things it could be uh either they have way more characters than we than they're showing off and um uh they're gonna get something uh, you know, they're, they're going to release a lot more than what we know of, or, uh, I also, they could honestly release the game with like maybe 10 characters. And I think that would actually be a good thing. I, I mean, hear me out here. I think it would be a good thing if they did like eight to 10 characters because the game is clearly designed for new and veteran players. If you want to bring in brand new players and you're going to overwhelm them with like 30 characters, they're going to be like, whoa, what, what do I do here? I mean, it it's I, I think like less characters would actually be better. I expected 24. I've been saying 24. Now I'm thinking it's going to be more like maybe 12. I'd be OK with 8 to 10, to be honest. Um, and I can see uh, them building from that. That'd be kind of cool too. I can totally see them being like, okay, here's eight to 10 characters. And you know, kind of like League of Legends was back in 2010, 2011, where it's like a new character every month or every two months. And I could see them doing something similar to that. Um, and uh, they're very FGC focused. That's great. I want them to build the community and not, you know, replace it. Uh, which was which is a conversation that people that we've been having and uh, the last thing is uh, it's you can tell he's very pro um, uh, pro new player and um, I like that I like that he's like let's build the community let's bring in new players let's bring in younger players let's bring in he didn't say younger players but th that's kind of what you're aiming at is to bring in the brand new players build the FGC make it better and uh, be nice to one another that's the other thing be welcoming and inviting to everyone no matter who you are and that's great and um gosh dude uh i'm probably gonna watch this like 15 more times um in a row um i'm also gonna go play some marvel versus capcom infinite now that i watched that because now i'm stoked on that game so um that's another thing i'm gonna save that for another video but uh um for for 
games to play if you're brand new to fighting games and games in the two games i can tell you right now that if you want to play something similar to what looks like this game is going to play like marvel versus capcom infinite number one and Skullgirls number two um we can you know people can argue over that but i think marvel versus capcom infinite would probably be very similar and um uh same same thing with school girls so um yeah thank you again so much please like subscribe comment down below let's get to 200 by the first of the month and until next time shred out